In this video, we will understand free body diagram and know how to write one. To solve any problem with rigid body dynamics, we need to understand and evaluate all the forces that are possibly acting on the objects. It is used to minimize the complexity of any problem. Let us understand how to write free body diagrams through simple examples. Our first example is a book on tabletop. The first and foremost important step is to identify the body to write the free body diagram. In this example, we need to analyze forces acting on the book. So, we are writing free body diagram for this book. If we have to analyze the forces on the table, then the FBD will be written for it, which is the free body diagram. The second step in writing the FBD is to know the forces that are acting on the book. First force that should be represented is the weight of the body which acts downwards always. It should be drawn at the center of the gravity of the object. As the book is resting on the table, there will be a normal reaction to the weight in the upward direction to hold the book in that position. We should draw this force at the point of contact between book and the table. And this force will be perpendicular to the plane always. These are the two forces acting on the book. We can represent the book as a simple box and write these forces. This is the FBD of book resting on a tabletop. Now, let us move on to our second example, which is trickier than the first one. We have a car which is parked on the slope. We need to write a free body diagram of the car. This case is different from the last example, but the steps to be followed remains the same. At first, we represent weight of the body acting downwards. From vector algebra, we know that we can represent the forces as their components. The weight of the car can be represented as force components. There will be a normal reaction from the surface. There will be frictional forces which holds the car in that position. Now, we have free body diagram of a car on the slope, something like this. Another aspect to keep in mind while drawing the FBD is the magnitude of the forces. If the force is less, it should be represented as a small line, just like what we did for the frictional force here. Let us move on to our third example, an aircraft. The aircraft will be cruising at 35,000 feet. It will experience different types of forces. Now, isolate the aircraft and write it as a block. The first force to consider is the weight of the aircraft, which will act downwards. To maintain the height, there will be a lift. This acts in the opposite direction of weight. So, we draw that force. Engines of the aircraft provides required thrust to move forward. So, we represent that force. For this thrust, there will be a drag force due to air resistance in the opposite direction. But drag will be less compared to thrust. These are the forces which are acting on the aircraft and we can represent all these forces like this. Now, let us look at a complex problem. We have a rectangular block and pulley on a smooth surface. It is attached to another block by string passing over a pulley. The block 1 is restrained from moving by a string attached to the wall. Block 1 has a mass m1. Block 2 has a mass of m2. The pulley is smooth and massless. We need to draw the free body diagram of all three objects individually. Now we start with isolating a body. Let's take block 1. The first force to consider is the weight. It will act downwards. Then 
the normal reaction force at the point of contact of surface and the block which will act upwards. Now, as there are two strings attached, there will be a tension. We write those two forces as tensile forces acting on the block. Both the strings will try to pull the box apart. So, the direction of the tensile forces are away from the block. This is then FBD of block 1. Similarly, in block 2, we consider weight of the body and draw it. There is no normal reaction force as there is no wall or surface in contact with the block. As the string is attached to the block, there will be tension in the string acting upwards and away from the block. So, we have the FBD of block 2 like this. At last, the pulley. It is assumed to be smooth and massless. Smooth means there will be no frictional forces and we don't have to consider the weight while writing the FBD as it is massless. So, there are two strings which exert some force on the pulley. We'll write these tensions in the direction they act. This is the FBD of the pulley. Each of these cases had some special features. So, while writing FBD, we need to properly analyze the forces and bodies. And now you know how to do that. We have a list of forces that can be part of an FBD. Whenever you see this force, it has to be in your FBD. The forces are frictional force, gravitational force, tension force, Electrical force, normal force, magnetic force, air resistance force. This is it about free body diagrams. As a small activity, try writing free body diagrams for the object you see in your daily life. Through this activity, you will be able to understand FBDs in a better way. To sum up, in this video, we learned what is a free body diagram. And then we learned the steps to write free body diagram like isolate the system, know the body to write FBD, always consider the weight of the body first and know the forces acting on the object. Finally, the forces that can feature in FBD. In the next video, we look at Lamy's theorem.